Mayor Pete Buttigieg breaks his silence regarding the aborted babies that were found from an abortionist in his town. And also, we will let you hear from the law enforcement agents that are dealing with this. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Welcome to the program, friend. I'm going to let you hear the entire press conference from three law enforcement officials in Illinois just happened regarding the aborted babies that were found in the garage of a late abortionist. I thought that it was in all of our interest to let the facts speak for themselves because frankly, most of the major media in America, you know what they're doing, they're ignoring this. Mayor Pete Buttigieg was silent for three days. He finally had this to say. Like everyone, uh, I find that news out of Illinois extremely disturbing, and uh, I think it's important that that be fully investigated. I also hope that it doesn't get caught up in politics at a time when women need access to health care. There's no question that what happened is disturbing, it's unacceptable, and it needs to be... It's interesting to me, is it disturbing? If it's a constitutional right, what was so disturbing about it? I don't get it. But he also wants everyone who is on the pro-abortion side to know that he firmly stands with a woman's right to choose no matter where her unborn baby ends up being stored or burned or discarded. I'm going to have a challenge for Mayor Pete at the end of this show. I hope that you'll stay with me. But I'm going to go now to the press conference that was held just a few hours ago in Illinois where the babies were found. Let the facts speak for themselves. Good afternoon. Thank everybody for coming today. Uh, with me, Sheriff Mike Kelly, is uh, Will County State Attorney James Glasgow and Will County Coroner Pat O'Neill. On September 12, 2019, at approximately 3.30 p.m., the Will County Coroner's Office has received a phone call from an attorney representing the family of Dr. Ulrich Klopfer, who passed away on September 3, 2019. The family attorney informed the coroner's office that while the family was going through the doctor's personal property, cleaning out the residence, they discovered what appeared to be fetal remains and requested the assistance of the Will County Coroner's Office to properly remove them. The Will County Coroner's Office contacted both the Will County Sheriff's Office and the Will County State's Attorney's Office regarding the information conveyed by the family's attorney. Will County Sheriff's Detectives, Crime Scene Investigators, and a Will County Deputy Coroner arrived at the Klopfer residence located in an unincorporated Creek Township and met with representatives of the Klopfer family and the family's attorney. Personnel on scene were directed to an area of the property in the attached garage of the home where 2,246 medically preserved fetal remains were located. Over 70 cardboard boxes of various sizes contained these remains. The remains discovered were inside of, oh, I'm sorry, the remains discovered were inside a small sealed plastic bag which contained formalin, a chemical used to preserve biological material. The boxes that contained the fetal remains were mixed among other boxes containing personal property of Dr. Klopfer. Crime scene investigators with the Will County Sheriff's Office documented the scene and the remains were subsequently removed from the property by the Will County Coroner's Office. Personnel with the Will County Sheriff's Office searched the entire property and found no evidence of medical procedures occurring on the property, nor were there any other fetal remains discovered during the search of the property. Dr. Klopfer performed abortions in three clinics in the state of Indi or at three clinics in the state of Indiana. The containers of fetal remains are dated from 2000 to 2002, which coincides with the period of time he maintained the clinics in Indiana. The Klopfer family has been cooperati cooperating fully throughout this investigation, and there is still work that needs to be done in this case. The Will County Sheriff's Office, the Will County Coroner's Office, and the Will County State's Attorney's Office have been in contact with additional agencies both in and out of the state of Illinois in regards to this investigation. All involved, excuse me, all involved agencies are still in the early stages of attempting to bring this case to a resolution. We collectively, collectively ask that the media and the public not pass judgment on the Klopfer family who made this star, startling discovery and who have been cooperating fully throughout this entire process. And that will conclude the port, that port, this portion of the press conference and will now allow any questions. Why so, did, do we know why the remains were in his garage? Any indication, any letters left behind, anything like that? No, we do not know. Is it illegal to bring a piece of 
introduces from Indiana to Illinois? Is that against the law? We are working with the Indiana Attorney General's Office, <clears throat> and arrangements are being made to transfer the fetal remains to their custody. Uh, obviously, he had three clinics in Indiana, uh, and I think it involves two different counties. There will be county prosecutors and the Indiana Attorney General. I know the Indiana legislature <clears throat> has weighed in on this also, and somebody told me that uh, Vice President Pence is, has called them about this. So, well, again, there's uh, requirements for record keeping, and that's one of the issues that the Attorney General in Indiana is initially addressing, because obviously these records uh, were not handled properly back at that time. Um, but as far as uh, you know, other aspects of this, this is still an open investigation. We've concluded what we can do here in Illinois. The Sheriff's Office and, and the Coroner Panel O'Neill have done a fantastic job in, in handling this very de delicate situation, um, and they did a yeoman's job in, in uh, you know, inventorying all of the information, uh, and that, again, will be transferred to Indiana in the very near future. Um, again, because it coincides with the time that he would have been doing the abortions in Indiana, most of the evidence of anything that occurred is there. And we will remain in contact with them. And if they, uh, you know, he had mentioned during one of his testimonies that he had done an abortion on a 10-year-old girl, and this is public information, uh, in Illinois. And the uncle had raped the child, and they did the abortion, and the parents took her home, and no one reported it. Now, we have no further information about that other than that, but I certainly will, would like to learn more about that. So how are they Didn't labeled? the family know that this was in the garage? Again, they, they, uh, they did not know. Um, they did not know. But once they discovered it, they called uh, Coroner O'Neill and the sheriff. How are the plastic bags that you refer to labeled, and, and, and have you have, have an ability to reach out to the women involved in this? Again, there are privilege aspects to this case that that bar us from talking about that. Um, again, are, are they labeled? Name on the bag? Uh, again, uh, there are privilege aspects that would prevent us from talking about that. Hang in with me, people. I'll be right back. Continuing with the press conference from Will County. About that. Any determination about the approximate gestational age of these fetal remains? Uh, again, uh, we can't comment on that. Are you considering all these fetal remains as, as humans and babies and not just medical waste? Again, we're, they're fetal remains, and I can't discuss the uh, gestation of them. Um, again, as one, after we make the transfer to Indiana, um, <clears throat> the Indiana Attorney General is going to ask the public if they uh, want to inquire of their agency um, if, if they're aware of anything that happened during that time period that would affect them, then they would be able to contact the Attorney General. And are they stored at 158 Scott Street? Are they, is that where the remains are today? I'm sorry? Are they over at the coroner's office at 158 Scott Street? Again, that's, that's uh, privileged information. Is there Have anyone you? else you're looking for? This might be more for Indiana, but is there anyone else, uh, a, an accomplice or anyone, charges or anything of that effect? Uh, again, this is, this is still an open investigation. We will be cooperating with Indiana authorities. Um, you know, so the, the next step of this would be you can make inquiries of their agency as to what they feel they can release or not release. But uh, with regards to that privilege, aspect of this, uh, to break that privilege, the, the individual whose information is being protected has to reach out and say they want to waive it. But is so, there any indication that you worked with someone to bring the remains here? Again, um, we, we have no evidence to indicate uh, any criminal activity at that house other than potentially the existence of the evidence that we found. How hard has this been for investigators to wrap their head around this? I know people at home are just thinking, wow. Yes, well, Mike, yeah, Mike if you want to address yeah, that. It's, you know, our, we, we, we held the house for a couple days, and then, and then we searched it. We, it took about 50, about 50 of our, our detectives and, and our personnel to go through this uh, residence because it's a very, very large residence, and there were hundreds and hundreds of boxes that we had to go through to make sure there were no 
more of these remains in that residence. So I can tell you in the 31 years that I've been doing this job, I've never seen anything like this ever. It is, it is a strange, you know, it's one of those once-in-a-lifetime things. Was he, in speaking to neighbors, he's been described as a very open man, he, and his garage doors were open mm -hmm. much of the time. Mm -hmm. Was he trying to conceal any of this? It certainly doesn't sound like it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound, it doesn't appear as if he was trying to. Mike, what about motivation? Would there be any motivation at all as to not getting, disposing of these properly? I mean, there's... Abortions it, are done all the time. Right, They're disposed it, of property by third parties usually. It's hard for us to speculate on that simply because it was from 17 to 19 years ago. And what you know, and without being able to talk to him, obviously because he's he's deceased, it's kind of tough for us to even speculate what his motivation was to bring him there. We're not, you know, that I I, I would imagine that the attorney uh, the attorney general of Indiana will probably do some more of that investigating, asking, you know. Because he had three clinics, and obviously he had other employees that worked in those clinics. So I'm, there, they got a lot of work. Expensive? They got a lot of work to do. Was it expensive to dispose of remains like that? Was he trying to cut corners? I mean, there have been some reports in some newspapers in Indiana that he he didn't do anything illegal, but he just didn't follow through on a lot of the things. I mean, is it money? I don't. We haven't looked into what it would cost. Honestly, Scott, to, to determine to to the removal of medical waste, because that wasn't our focus at that time, right? Our focus was to try to clear that house and make sure that, you know, we didn't leave any box unopened, so to speak. So I couldn't, I couldn't answer that question. Was there any other you know, like medical like material or maybe, maybe lab material in the home? Pardon me? Like was, was there any other medical him? material or lab material? Was he testing the remains? No. I mean, is there any idea that... What no, we didn't find any other type of medical... Was it just him and his wife that lived there? Yes. Yeah. 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 So what yeah. happens now? The garage garage for us? Pardon me? Boxes. It, you know, it, just imagine your garage, and you walk in, and you're you're storing whatever car parts, bottles of motor oil, whatever you can possibly. That's what the garage looked like, basically, ceiling to to floor almost. Well, yeah, of course, yeah. So that's why it was hard. Like I said, it's it was just like anybody else's garage well, where they got boxes. What happens to them now? What happens to the remains? Well, we're we're hoping that soon uh, we'll be turning them over to the. Uh, in Indiana Attorney General. Mr. Oh, we know for sure that right they're, now? Well, they're still, they're still in Will County. We know for sure that they're all from Indiana. All you know that for sure? Uh, uh, again, we, as we've said, it coincide, the uh, fetal remains that we have, the dates coincide with when he was operating his three clinics in Indiana. He was not operating any clinics in Will County or in Illinois that we're aware of. We found no evidence on the property that any of the abortions were performed there. The fetal remains will be transferred, as I said, to the Illinois Attorney General's Office. India. India. I'm sorry, yeah. the Indiana Attorney General's Office, and they will take custody of those, and they will be preserving them for evidentiary purposes at this point, and then uh, you'll have to inquire them. And they all have them. a date on it. You said there's a I, date on no, it. All I, you just we're said. not commenting on what, what records we have or we don't have, but... That coincided with... Yeah, the, again, we know that the time period, but I can't tell you how we know that time period. How do you know they haven't happened recently since his license was revoked? The condition that we found, the, the, uh, it's clear that they're older. I'll be right back, friends. Stay with me. I've got a challenge for Mayor Pete. You can hear it in their voices, how bewildered, how horrified they were, having to go through hundreds and hundreds of boxes to see what fetal remains they could find. We continue with this press conference from Will County, and please stay with me, I have a challenge for Mayor Pete. Mr. Glasgow, can you explain what crimes he could conceivably be charged in in Illinois, the crimes he could conceivably be charged with in Indiana? Just kind of well, a broad brush. Again, he's deceased, so none. I'm sorry, but if he were alive, what crimes would he have been committed to? And again, you know, he, he failed to follow Indiana law as to the disposal of the fetal remains under their law. He failed to file the proper paperwork under their law. Those are the two things they're going to be looking at initially. Um, obviously, there's, uh, he has facilities there that are still there. Uh, so uh, that, that will be part of the continuing investigation. Um, 
And then, as I said, there is a privilege that attaches to these fetal remains. And you're all aware of the HIPAA laws, correct? And so we're, we're restrained from telling you any detailed information about that. However, if a, if a victim comes forward and wants to inquire of their own information, they can waive that privilege. A victim do you mean someone who had an abortion? Yeah. Well, again, and I, I use the word victim in general terms, yeah. but if, if someone who did have an abortion performed upon them, they could come forward and contact the Indiana Attorney General's office, and, and they've made that offer uh, that that can be done. In that case, uh, what, what would uh, justice look like? I mean, the guy's dead, the fetus were aborted. So what, what would justice look like in this case? Well, you know, I don't want to speculate. Uh, certainly, because of the age that we're talking here, there's statutes of limitations that apply also. And they're different in Indiana than they are here. Uh, so that's all got to be looked at and sorted out. Um, the only crime potentially that could come of this is if we had a 13-year-old child who had an abortion. Uh, the person that impregnated that, that child would be guilty of statutory rape, potentially. So, but that's, you know, again, because of the age of these remains, um, I don't know if that that will be possible under Indiana law or not. Um, but that's part of the further inquiry that's going to be had. Okay, what's the statute of limitations on that? Uh, Indiana, I, I believe, I don't want to speculate. What uh, was it here in Illinois, for example? Well, it's been gradually modified to the point where I don't believe we have any statute of limitations now, but these that wouldn't apply to these old uh, issues. Mr. You're not looking like he was selling body parts or anything more uh, nefarious. Again, we have you, no, you no, we have no evidence... We, we have, we've concluded our investigation and find that we need to no, make no further criminal inquiry here. Um, and that's why the, the people would be in the best position to do that will be Indiana. And we will remain available, as I mentioned, if they get information about the 10-year-old girl and it's within the statute of limitations, uh, certainly we would be available. So, Sheriff, your investigation is over at this point? For the most part, yes. Mr. O'Neill, can you talk a little bit about what happens? There's a large right to life group that is out and about and very vocal in front of the podium, if you wouldn't mind. Could you explain what happens to these fetal remains exactly next? Um, so we very uh, rarely ever get calls or exercise jurisdiction over these types of cases. Um, as the sheriff indicated and the state's attorney indicated, uh, probably one of the most unusual uh, cases in our careers. We have over over 60 years of experience here at the podium and when I received the telephone call obviously uh, it was uh, quite surprising to say the least. Um, we did however uh, as a result of uh, 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 information that's been released about this particular case receive various telephone calls from uh, individuals, um, uh, cemetery associations, uh, the Catholic Church, uh, offering uh, free burials for for the fetal remains. Now, in the event that Illinois were to hang on to or exercise jurisdiction over this particular case, we probably would have used one of those avenues. But as the state's attorney indicated, it, it appears as though the Indiana Attorney General is going to exercise jurisdiction, so the final disposition will be um, up, to, up to their department. Can you also speak to the cause of death of Dr. Klopfer? Uh, all I can say at this point is it appears as though Dr. Klopfer died of natural causes. Pat, you're not an abortion doctor, but what happens when there's an abortion with the, the fetal remains? If, if this would have been disposed of properly <coughs> in mm -hmm. Indiana or any other state, how are they disposed of properly? In, in, in Illinois, um, we very rarely, or we never exercise jurisdiction as far as the coroner or medical examiner's offices are concerned. So whatever form of disposition either the hospital or the clinic provides is up to them. And I'm not exactly sure what that answer is. I'll be right back, friend, with the final section of their press conference. Here's the final part of the press conference from Will County, Illinois, and then my challenge to Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Are there any remains found uh, by his clinic in Gary in the garage? Do we know? We don't. Not we sure. We saw some activity there. Is that just part of the investigation? Yes. Investigators were at a uh, 
Fort Wayne uh, abortion clinic. Was anything found or anything communicated to you about? We haven't heard anything from the Attorney General's office as of just yet. We know they were doing some stuff today, but they haven't con contacted us yet. Were these rem remains sort of haphazardly thrown into these boxes, or were they sorted? Or, I mean, can you give us a little bit better sense of what what you found? There, you there was individual them? packaging yeah. on every single one. What are the chances he could have packaged this number of fetal remains and transported them to his home without someone else, like another clinic worker, being aware? Well, again, uh, we don't know how many employees he had. We don't know, you know, how he operated his clinics. Uh, so there's no way that we could answer that but question. You're not going to investigate anybody, accomplices or anything else? You're just done with it? No, 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 no. Saying? That's not what I said. <laughs> We've so concluded the that there's the nothing more in Illinois that we can right. do. That's why are we going to work with hand in hand with the Indiana Attorney General's office, probably the Indiana State Police, uh, the two prosecutors, two or three prosecutors in the counties there that are going to be looking into this. And uh, if they need our assistance in any way, we'll be available. If they uncover anything w that occurred in Illinois and it's in our county, we will handle it. If it's not in our county, we'll work with the prosecutor in the county that, that it is uh, applicable to. So A representative from the Indiana Attorney General's <laughs> Office has been here the last two days working with our whole detective division. So we're, I mean, yeah, I said that in Will County pretty much we've, but we're still investigating because we're assisting the Indiana Attorney General's Office and any police agencies they may get involved on their end. So we're still working it, but. Would you be able to share what procedures, if any, the medical examiner here did on those remains? There, there were no, no procedures at all done on the remains, none. For women who, just a question on that, for women who use Dr. Klopp for services in those years, are these remains in such a status that they can be determined, the DNA extracted to determine whether or not it was Jane Doe's baby or not? Is there enough material there to make that conclusion? Again, we can't comment on that based on the privilege aspect. As I Just said, if, if the individuals contact the Indiana uh, Attorney General, then that that can be followed up on. So it can be followed up on. Again, that would be up to them and how that'd be up to the Indiana Attorney General. But they've indicated they're looking for people to call their office. And just to put a point at the end of this, your confirmation of the years where the samples came from, is that more paperwork driven or more medically scientifically examined driven in those in those terms? Is it is it paperwork or is it science that's giving you that? Okay, we, it's both. When will the transfer be 2000 made? to 2002? That's yeah. when these pieces yes. were aborted. Well, yes. That was a label on the box. Do you know for sure that it was accurate? Again, the uh, examination of what we found, the, the totality of what we found, corroborates the 2000 to 2002. When okay. will the so transfer be made? One more question. Just to make sure that we're absolutely clear on this. As far as you know, there were no violations of law in Will County in this case? Uh, well, again, if Mr. Klopfer did something wrong, it's irrelevant at this point because he can't be prosecuted. So <coughs> what we're looking for is uh, to find out, work with the Indiana authorities to find out if there's more, and then also work with them if victims come forward that want to participate in the criminal justice system and, and some of them, look, be, even though the clinics are in Indiana, some of these people could have lived in Illinois at the time, and so we have a connection. So, um, but obviously, if, if the crime is committed in Indiana, they would be the appropriate prosecuting authority, but we probably could assist them. So we remain open to that. So the remains, can you, have you been able to determine which of them were related to which location that he was working in in Indiana, except then Fort Wayne? Yeah, again, I'm, we can't. Talk about that specific. Okay, we're done. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Right? Well, thank you. This has truly been a tragic, horrific discovery. Mayor Pete Buttigieg proudly declares that he is a Christian of the Episcopalian denomination. The Episcopalian Church teaches the seven, the seven corporal acts of mercy. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give shelter to the homeless. The last is the burial of the dead. To bury the human body. I am challenging Pete Buttigieg to offer to host an ecumenical burial service 
for these fetal remains. They are clearly human. He is clearly Episcopalian. The Episcopal Church teaches that human remains must be given a proper burial. And so I am calling on Mayor Pete Buttigieg to show his love for humanity by offering to oversee an ecumenical service to bury these babies.